Railroad relics are everywhere if you know where to look. From display pieces, to survivors, the forgotten, to repurposed items, and even things about to disappear. This series will show you as many as possible in places you may have never heard of. Near where the Black River meets the St. Clair River in Port Huron, Michigan, stands one of eight original Apt-type bascule bridges. Named after Hugo Apt, a German immigrant who became a civil engineer in the early 1900s, Apt's design was unique in that the counterweight was on the leaf, or movable side, of the bridge. His design moved the operating mechanism along the center of gravity rather than shifting it as the bridge moved. According to Apt's patent application, his design was for a more efficient bridge that allowed for longer movable spans compared to other designs. Apt was granted his patent in 1921. In 1930, the Jutt and Kelly Company of Detroit would be awarded the contract to build the Apt-style bridge for the Pierre Marquette Railway over the Black River. The bridge would have an overall length of 261 feet with a 172-foot movable leaf at a cost of $500,000, the equivalent of $9.14 million in 2023. The bridge was completed in 1931 and saw daily use as the line carried lumber and grain from Michigan to the Canadian border. In 1948, the Freedom Train crossed this bridge on its way to Pine Grove Park, one mile to the north, for the train's official stop in Port Huron. Pierre Marquette's successor, the Chessie System, would abandon 24.64 miles of track from just south of Croswell to Quay Street in 1971, as this section had no customers. However, the bridge would be lowered nightly to allow for switching of the nearby dockyard that I covered in Episode 1. The nightly lowering ended in the mid-1970s as the effects of the oil crisis caused businesses to cut back and ultimately lead to shorter trains. The bridge would remain out of service until CSX ended dock operations in 1994. In 2007, local philanthropist Jim Atchison would purchase the rail yard from CSX with plans of redeveloping the former yard. In the following years, the newly created Atchison's venture would place benches on the approach span. You have been looking at a tour of the bridge from 2018. In December 2011, the Port Huron Yacht Club would buy the 3.3-acre parcel that the main bridge was on. In March of 2012, the Yacht Club would apply for a demolition permit for the bridge. Since the bridge is over a navigable waterway, the final say of the bridge was up to the Army Corps of Engineers. The Army Corps of Engineers determined that the bridge would be subject to a Section 106 review of the National Historical Preservation Act. Contrary to popular belief, there's no checklist for triggering a Section 106 review. Rather, the review is determined by the type of permit being applied for at the federal level. If a permit could alter a historic structure or a potentially historic structure, then a Section 106 review is required. Section 106 requires that the federal agency in charge must give enough time for all interested parties to give their opinion on the permit. The federal agency must also act as a mediator in the negotiation process should a conflict of interest come up. The federal agency in charge is also required to contact the State Historical Preservation Office as each state can place the historical structure on a state historical registry. If a state fails in preserving the structure, the federal government can use eminent domain to claim the historical property before handing it over to the National Park Service. Initial pushback to the demolition permit was slow. However, a grassroots movement to save the bridge emerged. In July 2014, that movement established the Friends of the Pierre Marquette Bridge as a nonprofit, with the goal of saving the bridge from demolition. The establishment of the nonprofit marked the beginning of a nearly nine year standoff between the Friends of the Pierre Marquette Bridge and the Port Huron Yacht Club. The Friends of the Pierre Marquette Bridge argue that the bridge is a landmark of Port Huron's past, both maritime and rail, as both were a large part of the city's development. The Port Huron Yacht Club believes that the bridge's long inactivity makes it a liability for the Yacht Club and that it may also pose a danger to marine traffic. Some noteworthy moments in the fight are, in 2015, the Friends of the Pierre Marquette Bridge submitted plans to the Port Huron Yacht Club for restoring the bridge, which includes leaving it where it's at, cleaning it up, painting it, putting lights on it, and renting it from the Yacht Club for $1 a year. The Yacht Club states that they don't envision a future with the bridge on the property, and they reject the offer. The following year, some fishers who take their boats onto the nearby St. Clair River would voice concern over the bridge being removed. 
The navigation light that the Coast Guard installed to mark the entry point for the Black River, where the only boat ramps in Port Huron are located, had stopped working. Boaters are encouraged by the Coast Guard to use nearby landmarks for navigation in case such aids fail. The bridge, being one of the tallest structures in Port Huron, as well as next to the Black River, made it a natural choice as a navigation aid. Also in 2016, a Change.org petition was created in hopes of gaining support to stop the demolition permit. Unfortunately, I did not discover this petition until after it had closed, so I have no idea how many people signed it. On October 5, 2017, Box Steel, as well as the Schaefer Group Incorporated, an independent structural engineer, was brought in in order to assess the bridge. The engineer determined that the bridge is structurally sound and only needed minor repairs, such as removing standing water from the counterweight and the removal of a crumbling stairway. Repair cost estimates were also given to the Army Corps of Engineers, in case they decide in favor of preservation. In 2018, the Friends of the Pierre Marquette Bridge received a purchase agreement from the Yacht Club. The nonprofit can buy the bridge for $10,000, with the price dropping to $1 if the nonprofit provides a detailed plan on how to dismantle and remove the bridge from their property. The Friends of the Pierre Marquette Bridge refused the offer, saying that the historical significance of the bridge will be lost if it's disassembled and moved. In the spring of 2019, the State Historical Preservation Office stopped participating in negotiations with this bridge. Quote, consultation for this project has been difficult and has faced numerous obstacles due to the varying interests of the consulting parties. We regret that this project has become such a divisive issue for the community of Port Huron. Due to the facts at hand, the contentiousness and distrust among the consulting parties at the local level, the questionable purpose of the project, the lack of acceptable alternatives favoring preservation of the bridge, as well as a weak mitigation proposal, the State Historical Preservation Office is hindered from continuing participation in this consultation process." End quote. In December 2020, the Army Corps of Engineers issued a preliminary demolition permit for the bridge. The condition of having the permit fully granted be that the Port Huron Yacht Club had to submit pictures and videos of the bridge for internal review at the Army Corps of Engineers. On March 15, 2023, the Army Corps of Engineers approved the Yacht Club's demolition permit. The permit stated that the bridge had to be removed by April 30th. Adamo Group of Detroit was awarded the demolition contract. The cost of demolition has not been released. Work began on Monday, March 20th, with portions of the wooden deckway being removed so that workers could cut holes in the steel for eventual removal of the bridge one section at a time. On the morning of March 21st, part of the wooden deckway would catch fire. The city of Port Huron would place a stop work order on the demolition project until fire mitigation procedures were submitted to the city of Port Huron, and a city official inspected those procedures on site. The cause of the fire was ruled accidental as sparks or pieces of molten metal touched the deck unintentionally. On Friday, March 24th, the stop work order would be lifted. The contractor would pump river water onto the bridge to put out any sparks and cool molten metal pieces. Work would be allowed to resume the following Monday. Over the weekend of March 25th and 26th, rumors would begin to spread online of an anonymous donor claiming they would give $100,000 to a charity of the Yacht Club's choice if they immediately stopped the demolition of the bridge. On Tuesday, March 28th, the Times-Herald, a local newspaper, would confirm those rumors in an interview with the Yacht Club Commodore, Tyson Connolly. The interview stated that the timing of the donation was not appropriate, given that the permit was already approved and backing out of it may raise legal concerns. This rumor was also confirmed the very same morning the first piece of steel was cut from the bridge. Crane movement has been sped up considerably for the sake of time. Overall, I would personally witness about 80% of the demolition process.
After each section has been lowered, it would be cut up and sorted by size.
As much as I would have liked to make this a single episode, the reality is there's too much to share in one episode. Part 2 will be linked in a pinned comment. Part 2 will be uploaded the day after this episode is uploaded.